welcome to Quark Talk on Think Tech. I'm Crystal here. You know, as you may have seen my previous shows, I love focusing on women and culture. But I, what I really love doing is focusing and celebrating women who break norms. So today we're going to be talking about Asian American women back in the golden like 50s, back to like 40s too, and how this group of women really dared and used their bodies to dance through life and entertain and break through this uh, kind of stereotypical image of what uh, Asian American is to be. So I'm going to welcome our two wonderful guests today who flew in for <laughs> some special events. Uh, let me introduce my first guest. He is, well, get this. Okay, so he is the first Chinese American TV sportscaster. I didn't know that, Chinese American. And the first Asian American male full-time anchor in San Francisco. So if you're familiar with San Francisco newscasting and you ever watch the sports, you must have seen Rick Kwan. Rick, welcome. Thank you. You know, of course, I work right here at KITV, too. Oh, I didn't know in that. In Honolulu. <laughs> okay, so, so hopefully some of the viewers will recognize me from they're that. They're local. Kind of, yeah. That's Kinda. right. You've got ties with Hawaii. <laughs> and Rick is a documentarian. And the reason I pulled him here today is because he has uh, directed this film, a documentary on Dorothy Toy. And we're going to get to who Dorothy Toy is in a bit. But let me introduce my other guest. So, um, there's a beautiful lady, also from San Francisco, who just flew in last night, who looks fresh as a flower today. <laughs> yes. um, entertainer, apparently a magician assistant, I want to hear about that. And also a dancer in Dorothy Toy's group during the days. And you still are right. doing that with um, giving back and performing for seniors and uh, veterans and all these wonderful people. So, thank you for coming. Cynthia, thank welcome. You. Thank you. Yeah. So, is this your first time in Hawaii? or No, no? I've been You've here been many, here. many times. And I love performed? Hawaii. Yeah. You look like you live here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I did. So let's talk about the Asian American identity first, because both of you are, right? Yes. Um, can we talk about the representation of female Asians? Um, you know, in general, let's go back to when you grew up and whether you thought that was kind of an issue. Well, I think um, being a dancer was very, very uh, different for many families and Many of my friends, they were actually, uh, they were not allowed to, to join our show. And this was in the 60s when I joined Dorothy Toy. Uh -huh. And uh, definitely many of my friends wanted to be a dancer, but definitely their the parents said, no, no, Yeah, no, especially cannot. because of what type of dancing, right? I mean, this beautiful photo. Rick, tell us who Dorothy Toy was. Well, Dorothy Toy was one of the finest Asian American dancers. I shouldn't even just say Asian American, just dancers, period, of the 20th century. Uh, with their partner there, as you can see, Paul Wing. Uh, they formed the duo of uh, Toy and Wing. They performed throughout the U.S. They were the first Asian Americans to dance on Broadway at the London Palladium. Wow. Uh, they traveled around the world and uh, appeared in some uh, Hollywood films also. So what kind of dancing was it? How do you say it? How do you, is it? I don't know, what would you call yeah, it? How would you describe it? Uh, ballroom okay. and cabaret, which is also very different because in those days, all you saw were the typical either kabuki dancing or Chinese folk dancing, but never showing their legs and, right. and doing these stunts that Dorothy did. They are very acrobatic, though, too. Yes. Like people, I don't know if you ever heard of the Nicholas Brothers, Nicholas right? Nicholas Brothers. Paul Wing would do these tricks on the dance floor. Is that where they spin and they're like... Spin and... and uh, Flips and yes. things like that. Legomanias, <laughs> yes. Um, we ha I saw clips of your film where uh, Dorothy Toy was doing these things on point. It was just crazy. It's almost like a Russian style. Is that yes. what it right, was? Right, like almost a Cossack style. She had very strong legs. Her uh -huh. teacher noticed that she had this uh, almost a unique style that she could dance this way. So she became a star pupil when she was very young. Okay. And her teacher would uh, spotlight her in different presentations because of her strength in her legs like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But so how did it, you know... How do we go from um, ballroom to adding a little bit of kind of risque, little kind of sexy moves? And how did this become like, how did this break through into the industry? And or when did Broadway finally recognize and say, wow, this is interesting. This isn't just like Asian dolls. They actually can dance, you know. I think because of her strong legs, uh, the <laughs> choreographer uh, definitely uh, staged the, these dances for them. And it was so unusual again, to see Asian dancers to do these uh, acrobatic, uh, acrobatic movements. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. so that's how they became stars. Okay. Uh -huh. But, but um, Cynthia, I'm Cynth um, sorry, um, Dorothy, was, she was not Chinese, right? She was actually Japanese. She Takahashi. was Japanese. She just passed away recently. Yes, this past summer. Wow. Right. And so there is a lot of highlight in celebrating her life. When she first moved, she just entered the um, industry, 
How did the Asian population accept her? Because, you know, Hollywood said, wow, this is a new thing. This is really interesting. We'll show her on Broadway. But what did the Asians say? Well, I know when she was getting started, uh -huh. um, you know, a lot of people looked down on her because Asian women and entertainment, that was not really considered respectable. Exactly. But she had a lot of support from her mother in pursuing this dance career. So that helped her a lot. Do you think that has anything to do with being Americanized? That freedom of expression, the idea that you, you own your own body, you can use it, you don't have to worry about what you're being presented as? I think Dorothy was just different. She just yeah, had she a just certain spirit to yeah, she about did. her. Mm -hmm. huh. yeah. Okay. Well, well if you have a chance person. to watch the video, it's yeah, really a very strong very nice. person. Strong yes. person. So you need a strong person, not just strong legs. You <laughs> right. need that <laughs> correct to catapult through things. Yes. So right. Cynthia, you were also a very strong person. <laughs> Talk about how you entered the dance world. Uh, and well, I was very lucky. At the age of ten, I actually lived um, in the same apartment building as Dorothy Toy, and oh. it was uh, Dorothy that sent me to ballet school. Oh. And so. After graduation, one summer day, she called my mom and asked if I could join her show. She had just coordinated a show to go on the road. And uh, I joined uh, for the summer, thinking that I would start <laughs> my college education okay. in the fall, but it never happened. So I, I just continued to be a dancer with Dorothy and traveled with her for at least 10 years. So yeah. this was the beautiful photo. When, yeah. when was this? Was this like a... Uh, this is in 1967, when I was running for Miss Chinatown. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. And was this the part of the talent for the pageant? Or? Um, uh, yes and no. Dorothy had choreographed the dance for me to do for the talent portion. But this is a, a photo from the Dorothy Toy Show. I see. Mm -hmm. So did you have to learn um, different forms of dance for the show? Uh, I did. Uh, like, because this is we kind of like that modern. real 60s thing, right? <laughs> yes, yes. This is a, uh, a dance from the show Big Spender. Oh, oh that's wonderful. That's you in the middle? That's correct. Oh, wow. I love it because it's such a, um, you know, this is an American setup, really, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But you're using Asian bodies. Right. And you will recognize in the center is Jimmy Borges. Oh. Uh, very popular here in uh, Hawaii. Yes, mm -hmm. right. Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. Wow. So how did that feel? I mean, this is just an amazing kind of uh, a, a untold pocket of uh, Asian American history, right? Really. People yes. think of Asian Americans as just the model minority, they're the, the good students, or the railroad workers who came over. We talked about that before. <laughs> the laundromen, before. yeah, right. the restaurant so workers. Let's bring in the dance, the dancers. Well, everywhere we went, you know, when we traveled throughout the world, um, people were just amazed at our group. We had about uh, 10 of us traveling uh -huh. and uh, to to have music from the 40s and you know American songbook. This was all different. And um, so, so I think that's why we were so popular and we lasted so long. But did you have pressures of creating some uh, kind of more um, Oriental Asian themed pieces for you know, the Western audience? We did have a uh, burlesque number. And oh. that was the most popular oh, really? everywhere that we went. How and burlesque was it? <laughs> it was very burlesque. Really? <laughs> yes. But no nudity, right? Was, oh, 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 she's just laughing. Oh, oh. <laughs> maybe. But, so, how, yeah, how did it, yeah. Yeah, it was, it, yes, it was very suggestive and a um, little bit risque, but very, very well done. It was choreographed by Dorothy. Okay. And uh, what happens is that the, Say the center girl, the feature dancer, is dressed in the uh, robe, Chinese robe, Chinese uh -huh. dress, and, and many things underneath. Okay. <laughs> and as she takes it off, she hands it off to um, her assistants. And so at the end of the dance, she is basically undressed, and her two assistants are dressed. Wow. Uh -huh. wow. It's really nice. It's a really nice number. I would like to bring it back. I wish I had photos of that. I, yeah. I haven't seen it either. What kind of audience would go to these shows? All Caucasian. Very ah. few uh, Asians. Of course, in you know 1960s, there were hardly any uh, Chinese or Asians wherever we went. In, you know, throughout Canada, when you talk about Halifax, Nova Scotia, yeah, or right, right, right. <laughs> that's where you bridge. <laughs> they drove all the way across wow. Canada. Yeah, all across me. five times. I've been across yes. that highway one five times. And did they treat you as Asians or yes. as Americans? We were very well received. Uh, the Chinese actually, 
uh, wherever we went, even if they did not come to the show, because we would be on the same time as the restaurant workers, right? Right. And but they would always cook for us. Mm -hmm. And so after the show, they would invite us down to the restaurant and give us all this native food, you know, things that we wouldn't get a chance to eat otherwise. Wow. So that was also a cultural experience for you yes. to be able to go to these places that you normally would never have gone. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Rick, what do you think? I mean, if you were an audience back in those days and you watched um, a group of, like in the photos, these beautiful Asian girls okay. doing things that you thought, hey, okay, my mom never kind of, you know, did that. Well, you know, I think at that time, I remember people like uh, Nancy Kwan yes. who performed in the Flower Drum Song. Right. That was my you favorite know. growing up. Yeah. Kid. I think every. Young Asian American boy had a crush <laughs> like, on Nancy Kwan yes. because she was, you know, she was sexy, she was modern, she was Americanized. But she wasn't sexy in a vulgar way. She was sexy in an innocent, cute way, right? Yes. Like, yeah. I don't know yes. how she did but, that. But she did that. Remember that dance with the towel oh, on? And, and the if, fans. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Fans, yeah. fans, fans. Yeah. 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 I enjoyed being a girl. Yeah, I enjoyed yes. It, yes. So, you know, we got glimpses of that. You okay. Know? But I never had a chance to enjoy their performance. Right. But, uh, but I think uh, growing up in America, you know, we liked seeing Asian American women kind of breaking that stereotype of being the, you know, demure, shy, modest type. Yeah. You know, somebody who, you know, was sexy. Yeah, like that. But do you think that's an a specifically Asian American thing? You know, if you're in Asia and in those days, if people danced like that over there, it would be even more shunned on, right? I mean, there's the whole Chinese image of the wife or whore, right? The binary. And I don't think we can really crack that. It's so deeply rooted, these images. So when you have something like this, when you see Asians and it's like, but it's Hollywood and it's beautiful, but they're like revealing, you know, it's really complicates how <laughs> we're supposed to see um, Asian women. That's well, very true. Yeah. I am producing the uh, Chinatown Burlesque Week in San Francisco. <laughs> and would you believe I have Two beautiful dancers coming in from New York, uh -huh. another from Chicago, one from Seattle, San Diego, and, and Hawaii. And it's, it's an art form that has been re, you know, revisited. Right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But I think there, she, she's trying to approach, you know, there's this, what is it, this Asian woman fetish, you know? Yes, mm. yes. That uh, you kind of straddle between being respectable but also being. Uh, I don't know. Exotic? Exotic yeah. and, and stereotypical, yeah. typ typical, the subservient Asian yes. woman, that type of thing. Right. So, yeah. Like, I don't know how you straddle that. Uh, yeah. I mean, even today, do you feel like um, Asian American women are depicted sufficiently? There's no <laughs> visibility, first of all. <laughs> there's yeah. really none. I mean, there's like a, not even a handful of representation. But... Think about it, like how, why is it that Hollywood's kind of constructed this image or what they want, they want to see. Back in the days in San Francisco, before your time, mm -hmm. weren't those nightclubs, they had that one, was that Forbidden where, City? Yes. Yes. So was it all white people who went to watch these and there was kind of an exotic kind of I would idea. say 80% white. 80% white. Uh, right? 80%. Okay. We had all, a lot of tour, tour buses uh -huh. come in. We have five Tours. tour groups. Wow. Uh -huh. And they would come in just to watch because I heard there's this kind of myth, right? There's this legend, people in the old days who have no idea. They think that Asians are built differently down there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we were going there. <laughs> why do you think, why do you think they brought busloads of people gawking and wanting to go into these Yes, clubs? they wanted to see sexy ladies. Yes, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Again, you know, you know showing Kwan. your legs, you yeah. know, it's a big deal. Well, the whole world of Susie Wong thing, yes, too. You yes. know, they had that stereotype. Yes, that, uh, so it built from, again, the Hollywood construction of the um, Asian woman. So let's take a quick break. Think about that, kind of the juicy images of, like, <laughs> <juicy> beautiful, image. <laughs> sexy Asian-American women. It's like, wow, this is kind of a, a thing I don't really think about. So um, we're, gonna, we're celebrating the body, too. So when we come back, we're going to continue talking about the body, talking about how we can... Um, dance through life using the body in so many different ways as Cynthia here really can vouch for. So don't go away. We'll be back. Aloha. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough of Sister Power here at Think Tech of IE. And Sister Power is all about motivating, empowering, educating, and inspiring all people. And we have various subjects here. Sister Power is here at ThinkTech every other Thursday at 4 p.m. Again, my name is Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, 
host of Sister Power. We look forward to seeing you. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at sistersinpowerandkavai at gmail.com. Look forward to chatting with you soon. Aloha. Hi, I'm Rusty Kamori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life and the lives of people around you, tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Welcome back. I'm Crystal and I'm here with Rick Kwan and Cynthia Yee talking about the wonderful spirits of these Asian American women dancing and entertaining back in the 50s and 60s. Cynthia is still entertaining now. Um, and talking about kind of the stereotypes of how uh, Asian women are portrayed uh, in Hollywood, in the States, and, and how we break those norms by providing our own spaces and creating things. So um, we were talking about Dorothy Toy, right? Mm -hmm. Rick, you directed this document about her and a lot of people don't know who she was she was like really kind of a barrier breaking a lot woman. of people called her the asian ginger rogers okay to kind of put it in context of what she was thought of right uh, mm -hmm. right and i keep having this image of my head of her on her point shoes <laughs> doing these amazing dances so <laughs> people should google her because it's really quite impressive and cynthia danced with them um and you performed with Dorothy Toy in her group. Um, but let's bring it out a little bit more on, because we started hitting on the representation and kind of the respectability of a dancer, because it suggestions of the body, you know, Chinese think the demure proper woman would never reveal her body. Mm -hmm. And yet here we're celebrating the, the strength of a body. Dorothy Toy's strong thighs, mm -hmm. um, nice to open up a crack of the chagosam to see a beautiful leg. I mean, why is that exploiting? Is it because of the way we are you know, we want to see it like, okay, like Chinese women should just be covered up. You know, that, that's a very Chinese way of seeing things, right? Um, I think many of my mother's friends, yeah. uh, they kept on asking her why she would let her daughter, you know, go on the road and, you know, and show her body right. and uh, things like that. You know, why didn't I become a pharmacist or <laughs> a school teacher? Yeah. Or, you know, so. Did you ever question it yourself? Like why you, you defied? No, I always wanted to be a dancer. I yeah. wanted to travel. I enjoyed my life with Dorothy. It was the most wonderful. So you didn't feel at any point exploited or you felt like the way people looked at you was not looking at you as a dancer, but as a body. Did you feel that at all? Um, not really. Um, no. There are always <laughs> <laughs> Well, not, not really. <laughs> because there's always going to be those, you know how I'm so low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dirty old men who are going to see a show for the wrong reasons sure, anyway. Sure. So that without the dirty old men, we would not have an audience. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you're performing at the senior home? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, we're going to perform for Jack Sion, okay. and he used to own all the nightclubs here in Honolulu. Wow. That's amazing. And he was the first one to bring burlesque to, to Hawaii. Tell us more. So what was like the history of burlesque um, in Hawaii that you know of? Well, uh, Jack Sion broke a lot of barriers, and he was arrested 40 times. 40? 40. 40 times for having uh, <laughs> nude ladies serving lunch at his castaway. Wow. Are they all uh, Asians? Um, many of them were. He had even one that he billed as Miss Hawaii. Oh. Uh huh. And everyone came, you know, Castaways. for their lunch. It was. Where's that? It was a fancy nightclub out oh. at the airport. Did and you that's know where we went. No, it's a documentary Did idea here, right? <laughs> <laughs> you were thinking that. Yeah. 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 yeah, he 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 really he he's very active right now, and he was honored at the Burlesque Hall of Fame uh, this year. Wow. There's a Burlesque Hall of Fame. Uh -huh. That's wonderful. Yes, and yeah. so uh, he invited us here to Hawaii to do a show at the Arcadia about uh, a few months ago, and huh? of course the audience just loved us, and so we're going back on Thursday. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I hope people have a chance to see this burlesque. Um, but now that we're talking about Asian bodies again, you know, that sexual component, right? Again, going back to the, f what, 50s? Was this, uh -huh. what, what year was this? This was 1963. We were in Montreal. Are you in that photo? I'm right in the center. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. <laughs> you can't recognize her? 
I am fixated on their so many amazing ago, lives. I don't understand. I'm not looking at their faces. Neither, <laughs> am, I, neither am I. No, but let's look at this. I mean, this was the 1960s, and these are Asian women. Yes. And um, you're celebrating beautiful bodies. Yes. Right? Yes, There's that's no true. There's no exploitation involved, and yet, you know, people like to read into this, like, oh, again, this Asian thing, like, we're not supposed to be doing this. Right. Yeah. How did you feel? I don't know. I felt pretty wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I want to hear. I mean, yeah. you felt good about your body, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, sex sells, you yes. know. But they weren't mean, selling sex, right? Well, oh, I mean, okay, not yeah. completely. It's a border. Yeah, yeah. it's a fine uh, okay. line. Okay, huh? it's right. a fine you're line. Right. You're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about the new um, pageants where they have the rule where they don't have the um, bathing suit competition anymore? You know, that's a new thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I miss it. <laughs> I mean, women work very hard to stay in shape. And if, you know, you, if you do that, then I don't see it. As long as it's tastefully done, you could do a one-piece bathing suit. Right. And, they have done two-piece bathing suits for a long time. Right. right? Yeah. Right. Do you think they should do away with the bathing yeah, suit portion? Yeah, how do you feel about though? that? I think if it's done properly, it's fine. Right. You know. And it's also how you own up to your own body, right? Right, right. You know, when you're in your prime and mm -hmm. you feel good about your body, right. like you said, you know, you work hard on your body. Yeah. You should be proud of it. Where is the exploitation? Is it the viewer who feels like they're exploiting you or is it you feeling like you're, you know, revealing something that's not proper? Where, where, where's, where do you draw that line, right? Right. I, I don't know, it's up to the pageants, but, you know, in this atmosphere of the Me Too and things like that, it, oh, it's, right. yeah, it, it's difficult. Yes, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Kind of all. People show more on the beach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But my teenage daughter, because all her friends have these like tiny little tea bag yes. knee string things she has to wear. I was like, oh, that's oh. Now. why? <laughs> now I feel like I'm being the old fashioned foolish mom. Like your mom, who are your aunts who said, oh, are you sure you want to do that? When yeah. You go back to why, school? why are you allowing your daughter to do this? Yeah. 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 So you've taken this and you've kind of continued it. You didn't think, okay, well, that was my youthful days when I had a beautiful body. I still have a beautiful body now. I love dancing. How do I carry that on in my career? Talk about that. Well, we, we don't do burlesque or anything like that. I produce burlesque shows. Okay. But I, you know, our show, we, uh, we do things that are pretty tasteful. <laughs> and my oldest uh, dancer is 84 years old and our what? youngest is 70. So, you know, we, we don't do things that would be disrespectful but how do you in guys, any way. How did you guys get started? How did we get started? I think Dorothy Toy uh, uh, called me up and says, you know, they need a number for the Chinese Hospital Auxiliary uh, Fundraiser. And so we got together and Dorothy was involved and we did our first show, which was a big hit because many of the people that came to the fundraiser, they had patronized the Forbidden City Nightclub mm. and oh. they just loved this. Mm -hmm. And to this day, you know, um, I have what we call open mic in Chinatown. and um, all the songs are from the American Songbook and Frank Sinatra and whatnot. And I have doctors and dentists. They love to sing, believe it or not. And they <laughs> they, they, they never it. had the chance to, to do it. And they're all there. And they're 90 years old now. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. That's really, so that's, it's not just the dancing. You're bringing in people who want to connect to the old days, memories, yes, right? Yes, yes. Kind of a time, a bygone time. There's a lot of history. Yes, it's nice to see older people come out and enjoy themselves tapping their feet. And, yes. You know, nice. So you're doing more than just entertaining. You're, you're doing a lot more than that. Um, I coordinate a lot of entertainment in Chinatown. I've right. done the uh, Autumn Moon Festival for 30 years. Uh -huh. And uh, it, it, I just, right. it's very enjoyable for me. I think the impact is deeper though, right, Rick? I mean, would you say that? I mean, when you see uh, people like Cynthia going out there and creating these opportunities for older women to perform, you know, and not just to the older audience, but right. that we can still give. That. Yeah, it's very inspirational. Yes. To see, as you mentioned, some of the women are in their 80s, you know, right. and they're still out there performing and, and dancing. And all retired and... school teachers. My whole group <laughs> are retired school teachers because their parents did not allow them. To, to become a dancer. It yeah. was something, it was a no-no. Yeah. So I like to feel like, you know, they're keeping the spirit of Dorothy Toy alive by mm -hmm. still performing in that same vein. Yes. Right. Yes. If you had something to tell the younger generation who still maybe have restricting parents who just want to push them into, you know, the academics because that's the only way to succeed and it's the only way to be a proper, you know, um, child growing up, 
What would you say to the parents, first of all, and then what would you say to the kids who are, have this passion to do something that is kind of breaking? I think dreams? definitely you should have an education so you have something to fall back mm -hmm. on, but follow your dream. If you have a passion for something, go ahead and do it, but do it after you get your degree. <laughs> Please your parents for it first. Okay, uh -huh. okay. After that, you're on your own. <laughs> okay, okay, good tip. What about to the parents? All these like hovering Let them do it. Parents. Let them do it. it it's fine. I, I tell my friends, uh, you know, even their grandchildren, you know, they're, some of them are in college right now and they want to be an artist, of, uh -huh. you know. And I said, let them do it. Yeah. You know, they've got, gotten their education. It's okay. They have their degree. They could be an attorney uh, when they come back from New York. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let them search on their path, right? They need That's to. That's right. Right. Rick, do you have anything to say about that? As far as pursuing your dream? Or, yes. Uh, I mean, you broke boundaries being the first kind of Asian anchor person. Yeah. yeah. I, yes. I mean, the, as an Asian being so underrepresented right. in media. Well, you know, I, even my parents, when I told them I wanted to become a broadcast journalist, yeah. you know, at the time there weren't that many uh, there were many Asian women, perhaps, but not very many Asian men oh, in the business. Interesting. So it was, you know, it took a little while for them to get used to the idea of me pursuing that type of career. Right. But as I progressed and, you know, did better and uh, moved up in market size, then they came to realize, you know, this is what he's meant to do. And so it, it worked out. So but, you persevere and you don't let anything kind of push you away from... Yeah, I just felt like this... I, even from a young age, I always felt I'd be working in communication somehow, in the media somehow. And uh, so I pursued that, even though there weren't that many role models out there. Mm, and uh, okay. it turned out okay. Yeah, it turned out okay. <laughs> it turned out okay. <laughs> it did okay. And, and, and you reflecting on, you know, Cynthia and Dorothy through your research, you must really kind of have a new gain respect for Asian American women and their kind of, you know, perseverance to do things that they wanted to do, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, when I... I met Dorothy through different community events yes. in San Francisco. And, you know, when I finally decided I'm going to make this documentary and, and started to realize just all the things she did, yeah. it just like, wow, you know, this woman really deserves that recognition. And so if you ever have a chance, you know, you can search up Dorothy Toy, go look at her film, learn about her, learn about people like Cynthia who's out there still um, doing things for um, new audiences and still performing and, and being a proud Asian American female and embracing our bodies to do things that we're passionate about. So I hope you think about that. Enjoy what you have and give back and do everything to celebrate who you are. So thank you so much for thank your you. time thank and you. Uh, have a great day and go, go dancing. <laughs> <laughs>